Starhopper test results and Crew Dragon anomaly fix. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. In the beginning, just a quick community update. I've had plenty of questions on how to get onto the What About It Discord server to chat with me and others from the community. So again, as stated in a different episode, the Discord server is patron exclusive, though the lowest level of support, $1 per month, is already enough to gain access to the server. So once you've done that, on the Patreon page, in the upper right corner, click on your user icon and then go to My Profile Settings and then to the tab labeled Apps. In there, you will find an option to link your Discord account to a Patreon account and once you've done that, you're all set. Just open up your Discord app, log into your account and you should be able to see the What About It server on the left side where the servers are displayed. Now just click on it and introduce yourself. I'm online almost every day. We share the latest info and chat about it. And if you want to pitch in, you can even help make the next episode. Now that we've cleared that up, there have been a lot of things happening at SpaceX since Monday's episode. So let's dive right in. Starhopper test results. We've reached the hot phase in Boca Chica. Starhopper testing is underway and Raptor is performing almost every day as well. From pressure tests to pre-burner testing to even a first static fire where not everything went right. So let's look at what has happened so far in a chronological way to give you the most comprehensive insight. The Raptor engine that arrived in Boca Chica last weekend is already the sixth full-scale Raptor version to succeed previous test candidates that reached various stages of testing. Originally, already serial number 4 was supposed to perform the first hop in Boca Chica, though it didn't reach the desired results and was only used for fit checks and TVC testing. Then came SN05, which was supposed to do it all better than its predecessors. It went onto the test stand in McGregor, Texas for a planned 50 second burn. Only two seconds into the test though, the engine faced a 600 Hz vibration problem which damaged it beyond repair. And for anyone who does not know what that is, here's a quick refresh. If a rocket engine produces vibrations at a certain swing rate, or hertz as engineers would call it, these vibrations can add up, making each succeeding vibration stronger and stronger. I found a pretty good example for that, let's have a look. Here you can see a Chinook helicopter in a test scenario where the balance of the rotor blades is uneven. The test seems to start out just fine, but rather soon you can see something is wrong here. Vibrations, in this case at around 1 Hz, start to form and, similar to what must have happened to Raptor, amplify with each succeeding vibration. Every time it shakes, it is getting stronger and stronger until, well, poor Chinook must face reality. This adds up quickly at 600 Hz, which is equivalent to 600 vibration intervals per second. After two seconds, the vibrations had amplified so much that the engine took damage beyond any level of possible repair. Then came SN06, which has an improved design over its predecessors. In rocket engine development, it is very common to have several hundred or even thousands of design changes, be it hardware or software, from the first prototype to the final version. Here you can see a comparison between Merlin 1A and Merlin 1D++, currently used on a Falcon 9 or Heavy Core. This is exactly what SpaceX is going through with Raptor at the moment. After installing Raptor on Saturday and Sunday with preliminary pressure and pre-burner tests to follow on Sunday evening and Monday, SpaceX had done the first necessary steps to get a rocket motor operational in just two days. Everything went well, so the static fire could follow on Tuesday. For rocket enthusiasts, a static fire is an important thing. Imagine you are a mechanic and you just put a brand new engine into a car. The static fire is like sitting down in it turning the key and letting it roar up for the first time. Now imagine how a SpaceX technician feels when he does this with a Raptor prototype engine strapped onto a Starhopper demonstrator that has never flown before. It is hard to imagine what goes through these engineers' heads in such a moment. Nonetheless, they turned the key and watched what happened. And Raptor lit on fire, as it should. From what I could observe, everything worked out while the static fire was happening. It was a 5 second burn that did not sound like it was shut down early. Then though, Starhopper stayed on fire. There was a fire at the access hatch and there was a fire on the bottom for the next 4 minutes. My guess is that the fire on the bottom was fueled by the propellant connector not being properly attached or closed. The bottom of Starhopper is made to withstand fire, but the engine itself not so much. Though it looks like this didn't cause damage, or at least not much. 
Then after 4 minutes came the big surprise, a huge fireball. There was no explosion, so it just might have been methane leaking. But I would judge this as generally not healthy and most importantly not intended. The damage that was possibly caused was at least not known at the time that I recorded the episode. But I'm pretty sure there must have been some sort of unintended wear. I tried to reach out to Elon on Twitter, but I had no luck as everyone else, so I'm guessing they're just assessing the situation at the moment. But what about it? What can we expect next? As a static fire is there to test systems that can be tested on the ground and don't need a hop, and as some of these systems did not perform as intended, we can be pretty sure that there will be another static fire first. Again, at the time that this episode was recorded, there was no information on when the testing would continue. I will make sure to update you on the community tab of the channel as soon as there's something to report and of course on Monday's episode if we know more by then. Crew Dragon Anomaly Fix This is a news I've been waiting to present to you for a long time now. As you might already know, SpaceX is right now developing the Crew Dragon capsule to be able to fly astronauts to the ISS on board a Falcon 9 rocket. The rocket already passed the human rating tests and the capsule is pretty far into the necessary testing. After Crew Dragon successfully passed its demo mission 1 in early March this year, only the in-flight abort test and a second uncrewed flight to the ISS are missing. Then SpaceX will provide regular crewed missions to the ISS, launching astronauts from American soil again. On April 20th though, an anomaly occurred while testing the Super Draco abort thrusters at Cape Canaveral, which ended in the total destruction of the capsule. Now there are those that say that this demonstrated that an integrated abort system is inferior and ultimately not as safe as an external abort tower system. On the other side of the argument are those in favor of it for reduced launch costs, as integrated thrusters can be reused with every launch. In the end, every new developed system must be tested and can cause problems. These problems though are best identified while testing. In my opinion, this anomaly was a very good thing. It unveiled a possible fatal flaw that could have resulted in loss of human life if the problem had occurred on an actual mission. After the anomaly had unfolded, SpaceX and NASA immediately started picking up the pieces that were left of the capsule and started doing data analysis to find out what could have possibly caused this RUD. This time of investigation was not a pleasant time. Not for SpaceX and NASA, as it possibly meant huge delays to the commercial crew program, and not for us fans, as uncertainty spreads like a wildfire. Was the integrated approach the right way? Would Crew Dragon be able to be fixed? When would we finally see a continuation of the tests? Now, almost three months later, SpaceX has finally unveiled their findings. On Monday, they held a press conference and published a full and thorough report to the public. And what would this channel be if I wouldn't immediately start to dissect what these findings are and how the program will continue? So let's dive right in and see what conclusions we can derive from the report. The cause of the anomaly. In SpaceX's report, they stated the following. Evidence shows that a leaking component allowed liquid oxidizer, in this case nitrogen tetroxide, to enter high pressure helium tubes during ground processing. A slug of this nitrogen tetroxide was driven through a helium check valve at high speed during rapid initialization of the launch escape system, resulting in structural failure within the check valve. The failure of the titanium component in a high pressure NTO environment was sufficient to cause ignition of the check valve and led to an explosion. But what about it? What does this mean in words we can all understand? The Super Draco thruster is a pressure fed bipropellant rocket motor. Helium is used to feed the oxidizer and the propellant into the combustion chamber. Normally the helium tank valve is opened and the helium rushes through the pipes towards the propellant tanks. Directly before the propellant tanks there is a check valve. This check valve only opens into one direction. So it is supposed to keep the propellant from mixing with other substances inside the helium pressure pipes. Now the check valve on the oxidizer tank must have been faulty. This caused some of the oxidizer to leak out into the helium pipes during ground processing. When the helium shot out into the system at 60 bars pressure, it hit that leaked out oxidizer puddle somewhere in the pipes and accelerated it to very high speeds. It basically formed a bullet of oxidizer shooting through the pipes at very high speeds towards the faulty check valve. Now the check valve couldn't have possibly survived the impact and shattered. The Super Draco thruster uses nitrogen tetroxide as oxidizer. 
that is a highly corrosive and very volatile substance. It produces a hefty reaction when added to hydrazine. When it hit the metals in the system, it had enough energy to actually light the metals on fire. This caused an explosion as it happened in milliseconds, causing the chain reaction that in the end destroyed the capsule. Fun fact! The 3D printed Super Draco engines all survived the explosion, so they definitely didn't cause it. The solution. It's actually an easy fix. Replace the check valves with something else. In this case, SpaceX stated that they'll replace the reusable check valve with a non-reusable burst disc. A burst disc basically is just a metal plate which withstands the pressure of the propellant tank but not that of the helium which is much higher. As soon as the helium valve is open, the burst disc gives in which opens the cycle. This absolutely makes sure that the system can't be contaminated before the abort system is activated. NASA agreed to the solution. What will happen now? SpaceX stated that about 80% of the investigation is now finished. There are other things that they didn't want to go into detail that still need fixing, but that's almost done. Testing will continue this year, but neither SpaceX nor NASA wanted to confirm that a manned flight would take place this year. At least SpaceX VP of Build and Flight Reliability Hans Königsmann said that it might still happen this year. As an interesting side fact, the loss of the Mars Observer spacecraft built by NASA back in 93 could have possibly been caused by the same problem. Other possible reasons are stated as well. And it is highly speculative as there was no telemetry data when the incident occurred. But the exact same thing might have happened to that probe three days before it arrived on Mars. And this again wraps up today's episode of What About It. Did you enjoy the Starhopper tests as much as I did? Will Dragon get astronauts to the ISS by the end of the year? And did Mars Observer suffer the same fate? As always, tell me in the comments. Now let's give a warm welcome to my new patrons since the last episode. Sean Benedict, Greg Haddo and Yvonne Desseles. I hope I said that right. Thank you for supporting the show and for all the nice chats we're having on Discord. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content as this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most. To bring you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. So let's look at what has happened so far in a chronolo- The Raptor! The Raptor! <laughs> was driven through a high- Not high- The Super Draker Thruster! I give up. With a non-reusable burst disc! Thank you for supporting the show and for all the nice discords we're having on chat! <laughs>